Hi, and welcome to Lesson 6-1, where we will be solving linear systems using the graphing method. The goal today is to learn and understand what a linear system is and then how to solve it using graphing. So what is a linear system? Well, all you need is at least two linear equations on a coordinate plane, and it will make a system. So what's a solution? Well, you have a solution to a system wherever the point is that the equations intersect. So when you look at the two linear equations on this graph, the red one and the blue one, their solution is the point 2, 5 because they both intersect there. That point 2, 5 is a solution to both of the equations. If you were to plug it in for x and y, it would be a solution for both. So let's take a look at, at an example. All right, so in your notes on number one, this is asking what is the solution to the system of equations below? So we've got four ordered pairs. Well, the point at which these two lines intersect, if you graph them on a coordinate plane, is going to be the solution. So if I plug in a point, I can't just plug in a point to one equation because yes, that equation could go through the point, but the other equation has to go through the same point in order for them to intersect and both through, go through that point. So for this one here, let's just try the point D, the 2, 3. So I'm going to plug in 2 where I see X and 3 where I see Y. So right here, this is going to be a 2, and then the Y will be a 3. And I just want to see, is this true? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. Is 4 minus 1 equal to 3? Are both sides equal? Yes, it checks out in this one. So that means that this point is a solution to the first equation. Now i got to check the second equation. So wherever I see x, I'm going to plug a 2. And then y, I'm going to plug in a 3. I'm going to see if this is true. Negative 2 plus 5, that's 3. 3 equals 3. Yes, checks out. So that means that both of these lines are going to travel through that point on a coordinate plane, meaning they're going to intersect there. And this right here is the solution to the system, 2, 3. It has to be true for both lines. OK, this one's asking a very similar question. Here they're giving you the point, though. For which system is negative 3, 5 the solution? OK, so this point, negative 3, 5, we want to see um, which system is this a solution for or, or is true for. If you were to graph the system of equations on the coordinate plane with these two lines travel through that point, that's what it's asking. Let's just try A. So wherever I see x, I make it a negative 3. Wherever I see a y, I make it a 5. So 2 times x plus y does it equal negative 1? Well, yeah, this is negative 6 plus 5. Yes, so it checks out in the first equation. Now I have to test it for the second because it might go just through the first equation, but it may not be true for the second. So I have to test it for the second. So wherever I see x, I'm going to make it a negative 3 plus 2 times y, which is 5. Does that equal 7? Well, 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 3 plus 10 equals 7. Yes, it's true for that point, too. So that means that these two lines will travel through this point, which, meaning, which means that they will intersect there. So the system for which this is the solution is A. All right. Let's take a look. Um, just at what we've seen so far. So, so far we've seen uh, just one solution where we have lines that intersect. So it's important to realize that a system of linear equations doesn't always just have one solution when graphed on a coordinate plane. In fact, there are three possible solutions to a system of linear equations. We could have two linear equations that when we graph them on a coordinate plane, they're parallel. Well, think about if the two lines are parallel. Are they ever going to intersect each other? No. And if the solution is the point that they intersect, and if they're parallel, they're never going to have a solution. So we might see two lines that are parallel in, in which we would just say that that system does not have a solution. Now think about what else could two lines look like on a coordinate plane. Well, they could be coinciding. That means you could have one line graphed and then when you graph the second line it's right on top of the first line so that means the lines are exactly the same well remember a, a line is made up of an infinite number of points and if you've got two lines on top of each other all of the points would be touching or intersecting forever in both directions so there would be infinitely many solutions if you have two lines that are coinciding so these are the three possible solutions a system could have so far we've seen just the one solution of intersecting lines so let's take a look at a couple examples here and see if we can figure out what this is all going to look like on a, on a coordinate plane. 
All right, let's let's take a look at this one. Okay, so on number three here, it's asking us, what's the solution of the system? Use a graph. Well, it's really nice when both of these are written, y equals mx plus b. It makes it really easy for us to graph the lines. So I'm just going to make this first one red. We see the y-intercept at 7. So I'm going to put a point right here. We see a slope of negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to rise 2, run 1. And I'm running to the left to make it uh, a negative slope. So I'm just going to fall to run one. I'm going to keep going because I'm not sure where these lines are going to end up intersecting. So I'm just going to make this go all the way across the coordinate plane here. Okay, and then the second line, I'll make green. So here we have an inter a y-intercept of negative three. And we have a slope of one half. So up one over two, up one over two. There we go. There we go. As soon as I see the point of intersection here, I can be done. So in this case, we see this is the point, oops, sorry, this is the point of intersection, and that's at point 4, negative 1. So the solution is 4, negative 1. Well, in order to check my solution to be sure that this is the right solution, I can plug in the point 4, negative 1 in for both of the linear equations, and it should be true for both. So I'm going to quickly check that. So if x is 4 um, and y is negative 1, negative 1 equals negative 2 times 4 plus 7. This is negative 8 plus 7. That checks out. Then down here, I'm going to replace the y with a negative 1 equals 1 half times 4 minus 3. Half of 4 is 2. 2 minus minus 3 equals negative 1, and it checks out. So I know I did that very quickly, um, but you can always plug in that point into both equations. It just means that both lines here are going to travel through that point, and that will be the intersection point. So you can check your answer. Okay, so this system had one solution, the point of intersection. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now here on this system, we can see that we have our linear equations written in point slope form, and then here this is standard form. We're asked to use graphing method to see where they're going to intersect. Um, and uh, I can easily graph, I guess, this first one here because I know the point is 3, and then this is minus negative 4, right? So that's negative 4, and I know that the slope right here is negative one third. So I'm just going to graph three negative four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then the slope is negative one third. So up one, left three, up one, left three, up one, left three. And then just go ahead and draw the line through. So we got the purple line. Okay. Then I'll make the second line here green. Uh, but in order to graph this one, it'll be easier if I just rewrote it into slope intercept form. So I'm just going to subtract the x negative x plus 12, 3, 3, 3, and we get y equals, this is negative 1 third x plus 4. Well, what do you know? They have the same slope, don't they? Absolutely. So intercepts at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1, left 3, up 1, left 3, and I'm going to end up with a pair of parallel lines. They have the same exact slope. Different intercepts, obviously. This one's down here at uh, negative 3, and this was up here at um, positive 4. But they're parallel. And so remember, the solution is where the point where the lines intersect, and they're never going to intersect. So here I would say no solution. All right, no solution on that one. Because remember, there are parallel lines. OK, it was hard to tell that until we started you know, rewriting them and graphing them. OK, so here we have number five. I bet you can probably guess what's going to happen here, right? <laughs> OK, so in this first one, it's written in point slope form. So I'm going to pull out the point 6 and 1. And then the slope is right here, and that's at 2 thirds. So I'm going to graph the 6, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. Slope is 2 thirds. So up 2 over 3, I'm kind of off the graph. Down to back 3, down to back 3. And we can see there's our there's our line. Okay, then the second equation, I'll do this one in red here. I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it, um, solving for y minus 2x minus 2x. We have negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 9 divided by divided by negative 3 divided by negative 3. And so we got y equals, this is going to be positive 2 thirds x. And of course, this is going to be minus 3. So just rewrote the equation. OK, now um, intercepts at minus 3, which is right here. And the slope is up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. 
well, what do you know? These two lines are exactly the same. Now, they didn't look the same because they're written in different forms. But if we were to rewrite this first equation, we would be able to see that, hey, they are exactly the same. So if I distributed here, I'd have 2 thirds x minus 4. 2 thirds of 6 is 4. And then add the 1. I'd have y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. And they're exactly the same line. And so therefore, they're coinciding. They're on top of each other. Now, because they're made up of an infinite number of points, they're going to be touching at every single point for infinity. And so with this, we would say that, that um, this, solution, this system has infinite solutions, infinitely many solutions on this one. Okay, because um, they're going to intersect at every single point on the line forever in both directions. All right. So now let's take a look at um, just a little summary. Let's just kind of summarize what we have done here. There are three types of linear systems. The first system we have here is when we have one solution. So let's just describe the graph. When you have one solution, you're going to have lines that will intersect at a point. So let's just sketch that. Just sketch two lines and show that they intersect. Okay. And now if we have no solution, what will the graph look like? Remember, um, the solution is the point they're going to intersect. So if there's no solution, they can't ever intersect. They would have to be parallel, right? And so just go ahead and sketch that on the graph. And then for infinite solutions, remember that's going to be um, an infinite number of points that they intersect at. And so the lines would have to be coinciding. They'd have to be the exact same line. So just sketch kind of like a big thick line to show that there's two on top of each other. So when you're solving a system, these are the three types of uh, solutions that you're going to see uh, when you're solving your, your system. Either one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. Okay, so summarizing, there are three possible solutions to a system. Uh, one, none, or infinite. And if there's one solution, it's an ordered pair. And then to check if a point is a solution to a system, remember we plugged it into both equations to make sure that it was true for both equations. Okay, well, thank you for joining me, and I uh, hope you learned something about systems.